Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter, and welcome to the next episode in my playthrough of Soul Sacrifice Delta. There's a lot of different things we can do now that we've hit a level 3 difficulty. Um, so there are, for example, we could go into Avalon and do the optional Child of a Monster, the Radux uh, line of quests. However, I think it's good to sort of keep going on the main story to keep everybody interested. So for this one, we're going to be doing Destiny's Past. This is our story with Magusar. So the first one is one of my most hated monsters in the game, which is Cyclops. So forgive me if I'm a little spammy in the way that I deal with this monster. Okay, let's dig in and have some fun. Then I will have to kill you. Magusar proclaimed this when I very first met him. One day, a sorcerer would become a monster and slaughter many lives. Magusar saw the sorcerer in a vision and he searched near and far for this threat to life. And who did he find? Me. At first, I refused to believe it. But few of Magusar's predictions are far off. The bloodlust in my right arm is so strong, it might overcome me. A monster appears before me. It looks quite luscious. Like a heavenly feast that has been delivered to my doorstep. The Cyclops. Not very luscious if you ask me. I'm going to try something new in this video, so do give me some feedback in the comments down below. But I'm going to try to read at a faster pace, because I do know that some of these lore stories are quite long. Uh, if you prefer the faster reading version or the lower, re uh, slower, more normal reading speed, let me know. Anyways, let's learn a little bit about our target, the Cyclops. There was once a town that was famous for producing excellent blacksmiths. Even in this town, however, there was a blacksmith who stood out as best of all. Though the weapons he made looked rather unrefined, they were always both sturdy and sharp. The reason these weapons were designed to maim and kill, as such, did not require decoration. His weapons were the best. Despite his humble nature, the man knew this to be true, and yet it seemed the world did not agree with him. In terms of popularity, he was always a distant second. Customers preferred weapons forged from another blacksmith, a gentle and significantly younger man. The younger blacksmith's weapons truly dazzled, captivating potential customers. But for the blacksmith deemed to be in second place, these were scarcely real weapons at all. Weapons were for killing, not for dressing up and showing off. He grew frustrated and decided that something must be done. In the days that followed, the blacksmith worked with renewed zeal and vigor. He had to prove to the world that he was the best. He worked himself to the bone and yet nothing changed. Customers still preferred the other blacksmith's trinkets. The reason was simple, the younger man's work had become more refined and polished than ever. Even the old blacksmith realized that his rival had overwhelming talent. But consumed by envy, his pride prevented him from actual admission. Heavy drinking ensued and his health began to deteriorate as a result. One day, as he lay suffering in his bed, a strange vision befell him. A chalice appeared before his eyes, shrouded in pure white glow. It spoke to him in soundless words. If you wish to fulfill your desire, make an offering. The more valuable your offering, the greater the fulfillment. The blacksmith felt a rare confidence swelling up inside. He was so sure that if he obeyed the voice, his heart's desire would be fulfilled. Alas, he soon realized that he did not have a suitable offering. He had already sold everything he owned and spent the money to drink. On drink. Suddenly, the blacksmith had a thought. There was something he could offer, something close to hand. His flesh. He decided to give his eyes an offering. He had two of them, after all. Losing one would be of no consequence. He needed both his arms and legs for his work, but an eye was a small price to pay. The pain was unbearable, and the blacksmith wreathed in agony on the floor. He contracted an intense fever that did not subside for several weeks. But it was a small place to pry indeed, for what he had created was no ordinary weapon. It was a trident covered in countless twitching eyeballs. Once thrown, it guided itself towards its targets. It never missed. 
The blacksmith convulsed with delight. He had created his masterpiece. Once the world saw this, he would finally be recognized for his talent. Alas, he couldn't have been more wrong. No one wanted to buy a weapon with such unsettling looks. The blacksmith grew angry. Still, people refused to see the true value of his work. The worst of it was the blacksmith knew exactly why his weapons were unpopular and the reason enraged him. They're just ugly, people would say. The blacksmith decided to take action. It was several days before they found the knight's body. An eyewitness reported that he had been murdered by a one-eyed monster. After slaying its victim, the beast had raised its weapon high as though putting it on display for all to see. This is what became of the blacksmith. A weapon's value is determined only by the number of lives it claims. And so remains the blacksmith's belief, even as the monster he had become. The trident no doubt seeks its latest victim even now, and will continue to do so until the blacksmith receives the recognition he so craves. Hmm. It's, it's tough. I mean, uh, I know what it's like to work hard, do good work, and just have somebody else just because of pizzazz or charisma or something do better than you. And, you know, it's human nature to become envious. Um, you know, if you're making good stuff, why don't you get recognized for it? So I kind of feel for this guy, although the method is a little weird. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and kill the Cyclops. We will relive this phantom quest. Ever since we met, Magusar seemed oddly familiar, as if our journey began long, long ago. Magusar had a premonition, one in which a crazed sorcerer stood alone in a ravaged world. He said the sorcerer looked just like me. Magusar has told no one but me about his premonition of the apocalypse. He says that everything will be fine if we can change the future. But can we? <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. We have known each other a long time now. That we have. All but a few hours if you're watching this on YouTube. So, I mean, he's already going into action. He's going to trigger the boss, isn't he? He just doesn't care. I do not like Cyclops, so I'm going to buff myself to Holy Hell. And we're going to take care of him. So I'm going to summon the trees, pick the fruit, fuse the fruit, make super fruit, fruit pook up super fruit, eat super fruit, get super powered, and now I'm ready to kick some butt. Let's go spam kill the Cyclops. I mean, I suppose I should show you why I don't like this monster. He's just a little annoying. Okay, so all he has is a head and his trident. So I think we can take care of those. So for the head, all we gotta do is getting a little close. I do want to start focusing more on breaking parts. So I do need to get my intelligence level up higher. Okay, there goes his face. It's good. Let's try to go for that trident now. Can we reach up higher? Mm. There it is. There we go. We got all the cursed parts. Now we'll just kill him. We'll lock on. Spam. And here he goes. This is why I don't like him. Oh, 
You have it's like Diablo, so you gotta run and then quick turn a different angle. Sort of bait him into trying to go after you. Over here. So annoying. <laughs> then he comes up here, I'm gonna get away, just so you can see what he does. He's a cool looking monster though, you gotta admit. So he does he does he does his big roar. And now he's gonna do spinny spin. Spin to win! Woo! <laughs> it's so crazy with the spikes on his back and everything. Oh man, he is screwing me up. Is he red yet? He is. Okay, let's do this. Finish this in style then. We can use the extra points as well. Sacrifice thy flesh. <laughs> Fire! He's still not dead yet. Wow. Well, now I've got much reduced health. Um, which is not good. I don't have a good healing spell. That's something I should probably remedy. So I'll have to eat the fruit. Oh, he's going underground again. I wonder if this works. Can I do this to avoid him? Nope. <laughs> That explains that. It's not a Kanlos, get up. No, he's gonna do his spin to win. I wonder if spin to win if I can hide from it. Let's find out. Do your roar, do your spin to win. There he goes. We must be on our guard. Okay, let's chase him. You see why I don't like this monster? I mean, I like him, it's just... Ah, here we go. Yay! We earned a trophy as well. Good riddance. Your weapons sucked anyways. But I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> and use it to great uh, effect. Well, does that mean he'd be okay with a pretty death? I don't get it. I need the life. I'm gonna help him. You lucky, lucky punk. What's this goblin doing? He's like, I wanna be in the shot. Yeah, Magasar's not happy with me. Because remember, I am a sorcerer of Avalon. He's probably like, why are you saving people, you wacko? There, are you happy? Killed something. Die. Okay, let's see what we got. Cyclops is saved. Total score. Oh no. Okay, so it's three fifty for this. I thought it was four hundred to get the legendary. That was good. Get our faction rewards. Lots of new stuff. And we got all of the uh, spells from him. So this is great. So we got the Blacksmith's Eye. Um, so if you didn't read the story and you went ahead and just fought the Cyclops, you wouldn't understand why it's called the Blacksmith's Eye. I mean, you get to see him kind of like pounding and repairing his weapon, but you don't really get it, you know? So we do have a Stone Fist, which I'm not uh, going to be using. But this, I like. This is another, it's called Other Attack. It's a special type that uh, I believe is boosted by Avalon Sigils, but it's called the Smith's Fey Eye. Wake in the magic of the Cyclops and focus it into a fell beam of light. So it's kind of like a laser you can fire, which is nice. Unlocked a whole bunch of new Phantom Quests. I think the thing is I'm now going into level 4 star difficulty maybe, and so now it's unlocking everything in the free quests. The free packs. Lots of uh, sigils. 
Blood magic. Oh, yeah, baby. We're going to be doing lots of blood magic. And Hendrix. I'm sorry, I'm not going to use you, dude. The very thought of my own insatiability makes me sick. Could this be how Sortiara felt all that time? I'm almost guessing that this would be a different line if I had killed the Cyclops because I would be satiated. Your body is quite a burden. I am not the only one in trouble. He ages so bloody fast he can hardly stay mobile. I only want to be normal again. That was a wish that we both shared. Magusa would often tell me... One can change the future. I must dispel Sortiara's curse while there is still time. If I fail, then before I transform into that terrible beast, I am promised a swift death. At the hands of Magusa. Eight days until the end of the world. What state of mind would you be in if you were told that you would soon become a monster? The author of this journal describes this very predicament. He may want to share it with someone. The sacred chalice. The legendary chalice is said to grant a wish, anything one desires. I could use the chalice to cleanse my accursed flesh. Little is known about the magical chalice, only that it appears before those with insatiable greed. We have devised our own theory. For each monster we kill, we draw closer to the chalice. This is what kept us going. But our victims had to be arch fiends. Monsters that were once human. Perfect for us, considering our boundless thirst for blood. Okay, we are up against an avaricious slime. We've already read about these. These are just uh, very greedy humans who have become slimes. We're going to go ahead and kill the thing. I think our two main heroes need a little uh, pepping up, if you know what I mean. Um, actually, I need to fix my black right. I don't want to go in here. We're taking double damage. That would suck. I actually want also to go to the bazaar. This is something that I often forget and get... Uh, claim all the rumors from everything that I've been collecting. She'll give me so many. So I'm just going to do quick gain. There's so many of these. Another thing I will show you, because uh, you might be curious, is this faction power balance. Um, there's kind of like an online mini game that goes on every week. It resets every week where the more you play, the more points you get. And you can submit those and have sort of like a competition between the three factions. And if you win and you're in the top three or whatever, you can get some cool rewards. It's not totally necessary. Um, so if you don't, I don't think I can participate. I think you need to have the online battle pass. To me, it's not a big deal because I have it on my Japanese version. Um, and quite frankly, the stuff isn't unique, so you don't need it. Um, but you do want to go into Log Slayer points. So I have 30 points. I'm going to register these. I got awarded the title of Monk. Got a blue chest of fate. 
get all this. So it's a great month. Cool. So basically what you're aiming for is 11,200 points is the final. As we get up to like 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000, uh, we'll start unlocking special sigils for that faction. So that's a very important part of this game. So let's go ahead and start putting on some rumors so we can start using them up because otherwise we'll get all filled. You can only hold 127. Uh, let's get... Uh, let's just boost experience. Megasar says he doesn't remember his age. After all, as long as he continues to take other people's lives, he'll live forever. Megasar told me he was tired of his special body. I just want to be normal, he said. Though his reasons differ from mine. Megasar desires the chalice as well. A fellow sorcerer. I could hear roaring magical explosions followed by a violent scream. Could the one who screamed still be alive? Hmm. What be going on? I'll let this play out because this is the first time we're going into this rather large arena. I love the water pot in the sky. It's cool. On the OLED version, it's like really deep blue. Um, on the Vita, it's a little bit more washed out than you see on this. Like the, um, the light. Oh, let's go save Oris. Oris, my friend. This can't be. Somebody help me. I gotcha. I gotcha, buddy. Give up my life. Those wounds of yours need to be treated. Let's take care of these monsters really fast. Yes. Oh, did I just steal his sacrifice? Is he gonna take it if we give it to him? Yes, take it. Take it, my dude. Oh, you're just saying it. If you're not gonna take it, I will. I'll give you some life. Oh wait, I'm Sanctuarium. That doesn't heal me. <laughs> okay, before we go on, I wanna just cheese this boss really fast. So, let me pick the fruit. That's for me. This will be for them. Again, at later levels, we'll spawn multiple fruits. Okay, let's see if we can get them both in one shot. There you go, boys. Armor up. Speed up. We're good to go. Lock on. There we go. See, that went by fast. So you can be very aggro in this game if you want to be. Or you can be very deliberate, which you'll need to be at later levels, which makes it very much like Monster Hunter in some regards. Yeah, we'll sacrifice it. We all need a little blood. There's no way I'm going to get this in time. Yeah, I didn't think so. But I would rather that than having too much time. Eliminated. Second rate, that's not very good. But I was just being sloppy and lazy because I didn't care. Didn't even break apart. Huh? <laughs> that's fine. Battle results bonus plus 20. I like that.
This monster belonged to a variety of humanoid slime. Those who transformed into monsters were devoured irreversibly by their own greed. And what did they seek in their avarice? The sacred chalice, of course. Then we made the connection. The memories of monsters may contain clues that could lead us to the chalice. We can absorb their memories by giving their lives in sacrifice. No good. Nothing new. Most of the memories claimed from our victims are vague and opaque. The sacred chalice appears far out of reach after all. Magusar and I had traveled together for years by now. Magusar sighed, but from out of nowhere. We heard a cackle from afar. Seven days until the end of the world. The sacred chalice offered the chance to restore the body to the two friends who needed this. No one ever wanted this as much. Go on, read for yourself. This was not the first time I had met this sorceress. Her name is Ilicebra. Ilicebra claims that she is despondent over Magusar's rejection of her. Perhaps that explains why she detests me. Because I stand at Magusar's side instead of her. She had besieged us several times before. The slime that we now faced was also her work. I am so lonely. Come, let us die together. I had heard that line before. Ilicebra refuses to die alone. She claims to have been Magusar's former partner, but I am not ready to believe that. Okay, Ilicebra. So we get some lore on you, we don't. We don't know who you are. Do I need to repair anything? No, I'm pretty good. Cool, let's, uh, do I need to increase my experience a little bit? Maybe not. Am I gonna save her or kill her? I'm not sure if they'll give me the choice, but if I get the choice, I would save. What do we have here? Just a bunch of very monster-specific boosts. Well, we'll just leave this. I want the legendary ranking. Megusar must hold some special attraction. Illis Seber has been following him for a while now. She simply won't give up. You need to stay with Magusar. The voice has been telling me that from the beginning. And when I see Elisibra, the voice only grows louder. Beware of the female sorceress. It's... I think I mentioned this in my previous Sorcerer Showdown, but... Ooh, she just looks nice. She's a little crazy, but... Looks nice. 
Um, so when you use the spear attacks, they're very good against sorcerers. They have a very hard time protecting against it. Then again, I don't think these battles are necessarily meant to be hard. They're more just, I think, for narrative reasons. However, I have heard that very late game we can get like level 15 difficulty random quests against them and they are really good like hard who is she going on about Stalker. Oh, and she ran away. Typical villain. Why do they always do that? They come, they say some mysterious stuff, and then they just flee. You're an anime troop. Well, not really even anime at this point. It's Hollywood as well. Okay, completed. Elisibra has gone away. Only to come back another day. Did we get our legendary? Yes. Good. One minute on the dot. Ooh, we're starting to get silver rewards. I like that. Silver ones have higher attack or better casting. Generally better attack though, or like higher recovery, so it's good. Like the way she affectionately refers to Magusa. You will want to meet me again, I know. You'll come and seek me. Saying this, Ilicebra left us be. She gives me a strange feeling. Magusa tells me that they have no past whatsoever as partners. Just who is she? A perfect stranger. That is what Magusa says. But eerily, the expressions of love and hate that Inesibra directs at Magusa feel deeply sincere. Is it only me who feels unease when I see this mysterious sorceress? Seven days until the end of the world. Now we have met Elisibra. She claims to have been Magusa's former partner, but he says otherwise. Is Elisibra a liar, a madwoman, or both? Read on to learn the truth. I suppose it was no surprise we fell for Ilicebra's trap. We now find ourselves in the position of searching for her. You see, she's taken a hostage. It was an intricate ploy. The slime was the bait that lured us in. I never enjoyed dealing with Ilicebra. One look at her face and I feel nauseated, and my arm smarts. Just tracking down her hideout weighed heavily upon me. Okay, looks like we're going up against some random mobs, the rancid egg spiders. So we probably have, yes, some lore about the spiders. So let's read up. Ah, sweet fruit. Its flavor attracts all manner of living creatures. Why is this? Plants reproduce by spreading the seeds as wide an area as possible. A plant's instinct is to reproduce so that it can be described as desire. So plants manipulate other creatures' desire to fulfill their own. Plant seeds are encased in juicy, sw sweet flesh. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Animals are attracted by this and eat the fruit, swallowing its seeds. Carried within the animal's body, these seeds are then deposited elsewhere. 
Fruit is sweet precisely to rouse desire in other animals. This was a characteristic that caused fruit to be looked upon by great envy by one particular type of creature, arachnids. He goes without saying that most arachnids spin webs in order to catch their prey. In other words, they simply wait for the other creatures to get caught in their traps. Many arachnids felt a certain irritation about the fact that once their web has been spun, they can do nothing but wait. Many dreamt of being able to attract their prey in the same way that fruit does. Of course, that would make them more effective predators, and this, in turn, would bring prosperity to their species. If trees would ensure their legacy using the sweetness of fruit, why shouldn't the arachnids do the same? There are in fact many arachnids in this world who have fulfilled this dream, arachnids who have been influenced by sorcery. If sorcery was used in battle, the land would be exposed to traces of magic. As this magic builds up, it can cause arachnids to mutate. Sorcery can sharpen and strengthen the desire within them, their dreams. Fruit-like protuberances started growing on their bodies, their sweet aroma luring other creatures toward them. Arachnids that started to lure their prey in this way have become to known as fruit spiders. Fruit spiders use their pungent aroma to entice their prey as the webs they spin. They became much more efficient predators. Food supply was no longer an issue for them. As a result, they became rather gluttonous creatures, growing to be many times larger than the ordinary arachnids. Their enormous size meant they could now attack their prey directly just like any other beast. The ability to hunt in this manner means that, in a sense, they no longer need to spin webs. This may strike you as somewhat odd. Indeed, there is something of a contradiction here. The arachnids first grew the fruit on their bodies to lure other creatures into their webs. Now that they no longer need to lure their prey, the fruit is useless. Despite this, fruit spiders strive to heighten their appeal. They gather nutrients from the prey they capture and feed it to the fruits that grow on their bodies, thus making it ever sweeter. The sweetness was only ever a means to an end, not an end in itself. Similar perhaps to the vanity of human beings, is it not? They completely... They compete purely for the satisfaction of being the most beautiful, a form of greed pure and simple. Fruit spiders are the same. They seek to attract other creatures with sweetness, but there is little other reason for it, just the desire to be sweet for sweetness' sake. And this desire can take other forms, some fruit spiders that have lost any trace of their fruit, which has probably been consumed by other creatures. Indeed, it seems fruit spiders are searching for something with which to replace it as we speak. They have even been seen acting as lanterns, still with the desire to attract creatures, but now using light to lure insects at all. Hmm. Okay, well, I can't hate on the hustle to survive, so... Spiders, you're okay in my book. Give me your fruit to feast upon. It was all part of her plan. It started with the slime we defeated a few days previously. Perhaps all the... Perhaps all the souls and memories I've absorbed are having an effect. I can no longer be certain of my own memories. Even this journal feels like it was written by another's hand. I'm worried about the hostage. We must hurry. Who is the hostage again? I don't know if they told me. Add gem. Okay, well. Pick up Anjem and then we'll defeat a bunch of spiders. Where's Anjem? Over there? Ignore the spiders for now. Go help your teammates. Anjem, I've got you, my man. My lady. Whatever you are, I can't tell yet. You're a dude. Okay, my man. Looks like he came out of, like, the bouncer for PS2 or something. <laughs> okay, let's go get these blood spiders, huh? what I love about the NPCs in this game, like, I can probably just leave it pretty much to them and they will handle most of the quest. I don't think the story mode is meant to be incredibly difficult, and I like the fact that the NPCs are very capable. So if you do spend the time to level them up by uh, just using them or by giving them extra offerings you may have accumulated, uh, they can be quite formidable, in fact, probably better than a lot of human players that you might join. Uh, but the story itself is single player, so you'll be using NPCs anyways. Oh shoot, I hit the wrong button. Now 
Nah. Oh well. Trying to gather as much as I can. Da. Got an ice spear and I got the thunder spear and a venom roar. Okay. Sounds good. Lots of shards and essences. My intelligence is now 10. Slowly getting there. We lifted the key memory from the slime that Illicebra set upon us. Illicebra had taken a man's wife hostage. The man loved his wife deeply and was determined to rescue her. These powerful urges transformed the man into a monster. Giving birth to that slime. She sold a story to the man and turned him into that humanoid slime. She said his wife would be safe if he killed the sorcerers. We faced him, and he became our sacrifice. Our right arms inherited the man's profound love for his wife. He wished to have her back. Zebra was beginning to bother me. Her face concerned me. The striking resemblance. I never thought that I would have to see that face again. I wanted to forget. But she will not let me. Illicebra could be her twin. Illicebra perfectly resembles Sortiara, who should be long dead. Seven days until the end of the world. believe that Illicebra and Sortiara were connected. The encounter with Illicebra was in some way a reunion with Sortiara. Our dear author must have been horrified. The man that Illicebra used as her pawn must have loved his wife deeply. 
From within our right arms, the man's soul let out a tragic cry. For she too has turned into a terrible beast. Your husband was killed by a duo of very wicked sorcerers. Hearing that drove her mad on the spot, and she became a monster. These are the two who are responsible for your loss. Go ahead, avenge him. The soul of the husband who was transformed into a monster dwelled in our right arms. His soul spoke to me through my arm. Save my dear wife. I was torn between choices. A slaughter between lovers. It was a deplorable setup. Don't forget, our goal, our mission, as sorcerers. The voice of reason, Magusa. The only way forward is to kill. Well then, I mean, I know that the husband wants to save the wife. But I think if I can sacrifice the wife, at least their souls will be together in my arm. So that seems like a better solution to anything else. But man, Illusir is mean. To do that to people in love, that's just not nice. So anyways, let's go and kick some more slime butt. Illusir excels at taking advantage of people's weaknesses. That couple were so poor, and Illusibra knew that. She used it without a second's pause. The wife had transformed hideously, and her husband let out a cry from within my arm. We were flooded with memories, sights and sounds of happier times for this tragic couple. So, we'll try to put her out of her misery as fast as we can. This underground arena. You must remain focused, even if your heart is split open. So fun fact, in Monster Hunter or Japanese games, the art of buffing yourself crazy before a hunt is called doping. <laughs> so let's do a little bit of doping here. Okay, we're ready. Get away because it's going to blast. There we go. Giant fork. So as much as I want to save her, if she has to live in a reality where... Not yet. There are regrets I still have. Oh, she's got regrets? Well, in that case... If she wants to remain, I'll let her. You got it, girl. <laughs> Finish what? I don't know what you're talking about. We saved a life. That's that's good. Didn't save the husband, but hindsight is twenty twenty vision, as they say.
I know a lot of you are probably cringing in the comments saying like I can't believe he's just playing so sloppily he should be going for first raid or legendary sorcerer what is he doing I don't want to take this game too seriously as I go through the main story so that's why get ourselves a bunch of new silver spells it's good I couldn't deal the death blow Without preamble, Magusar spoke. Live on. Be happy. I will be watching. It was the soul of the husband from within Magusar's right arm. The wife broke down in tears and peered at Magusar's right arm and said, Thank you. A fleeting reunion. This was all we could offer as atonement. Was this deed a selfish act? Perhaps. But there is little the survivors of the dead can do to atone. Our actions weigh heavily upon us. I have felt an onus ever since the moment I sacrificed Sodiara. If that too was an act of selfishness. I wonder why I can never seem to leave it behind. What can be done so that these lost souls may rest in peace? It is we, the living, who are left to brood on such matters. I feel certain that Ilicebra will cause us further difficulty. Magusar was disgusted by her designs to take us with her in death. We cannot afford to indulge that old crone. Old crone? Did you say old crone? Yes, for is she not just that? Was it only me? Did Ilicebra only resemble Sortiara through my eyes? Why did she take the face of Sortiara? Perhaps I am already insane, and am just the last to know. Six days until the end of the world. I'm impressed. Very few have managed to read this far. You may stand a good chance after all. I had heard of Magusar's prescient abilities before I met him. He was well known among sorcerers. I have found you. Magusar appeared suddenly before me with a most unsettling proclamation. One day, you will become a beast and trigger the apocalypse. He claimed to have come to prevent this grim fate. Now, if that were true, saving the world would not be very difficult. I wanted to kill you at first. But I had a change of heart. My belief was that no one could ever fully comprehend me. But it occurred to me that with a plight so dire, maybe you could understand me. That at least was my hope. Magusar invited me to join him. 
since we were both aberrations. Become a beast, and I shall kill you. Your life will be passed on to me. That is my duty as your partner. He would be my partner, despite the blood on my hands. Magusa could read my thoughts. The guilt from murdering my partner was threatening to overcome me. No spell can be cast that will cure solitude. And so... This has been on my mind since the day that I sacrificed Sotiara. Perhaps somewhere deep down, I wished to be forgiven. I held out my hand, and Magusa offered his. We shook hands, and an old sensation returned. A feeling forgotten since parting with Sotiara. And how closely bound are the souls of partners. I strongly felt that this was a man I could trust. In some demented fashion, those two were deeply connected, inseparable to one another. But then, that their relationship should end in such a way. Okay, and that is the end of Destiny's Past, unlocking the next major chapter called Fading Humanity, which is a level 5 difficulty quest hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh, i certainly did as well and very interested to jump into fading humanity let me know down in the comments below if there's anything i could be doing better through these playthroughs and i hope you are enjoying this game's story as much as i do hope you guys enjoyed this video until next time happy hunting